Welcome everyone to the SEO Lounge, where each month we host community training events with one of our IMG SEO instructors, or in the case of today, just an SEO that we like and admire. We dive into the strategies that they're using to grow their organic traffic and unpack their recipes for success. Today's episode of the SEO Lounge is with Steve Toth, and we'll be going through his top notes from SEO Notebook for 2022. Soon, we're going to be joined by Steve, but before that, just uh, jump into the chat and let us know that you're out there and where you're joining us from. Please uh, just say hi. Let us know that you can hear us. And uh, whether you're streaming from the IMG website or uh, LinkedIn or YouTube or Facebook, you should have a chat box next to the video. So do put in your questions and comments and don't hold back. We'll try to get through all of them before the end of the show. Awesome. Thanks, Andy. So before we get started, I just want to talk a little bit about IMG Courses, the host of this event. We're the largest SEO courses membership platform in the world. And if you join us, you'll get access to more than 40 traffic and income generating courses from the world's top SEOs. We add at least one new course every month and we have various learning tracks. So if you want to learn link building, technical SEO, on-page SEO, content strategy, grow your agency or team, or even dive a little bit into black hat training or white hat, everything in between, for $97 a month, you get access to all of this, plus a bunch of bonuses like a huge library of quarterly SEO tests. And we are at internetmarketing.gold. You can see that URL at the bottom of the screen, and we hope to have you join us if you aren't already a member. Thank you, Lauren. Uh, I believe we have over 400 people who've registered for the event today. So a huge turnout and uh, just want to welcome everyone, regardless of uh, where you found out about the event. Uh, just a quick rundown for today. So we have about an hour. Uh, notoriously, we have gone over time, so we'll try and not do that today. Um, we're going to start with a bit of Q&A with uh, Steve, Lauren and I. Uh, we'll be asking Steve some uh, questions that we want answers to. And uh, then we'll be letting Steve take over as he takes us through uh, his top seven SEO notes from uh, 2022. That's going to go for about uh, 20 or 30 minutes. And then we'll finish off with uh, general AMA from uh, everyone joining today uh, until we run out or until Steve has to has to go one or the other. Now, Lauren. Yeah, awesome. So in case you don't already know Steve, he's well known for being the man behind SEO Notebook, one of the industry's most popular resources with over 10,000 weekly subscribers. Uh, Steve has also been the head of SEO for FreshBooks, and he took their traffic to 1.8 million visitors a month. He's been the advisor for keyword tools such, or software tools such as Keyword.com and worked with brands like Toyota, KPMG, Intercom, EMI, and a whole list of other brands. Thanks, Lauren. Yeah, I first got to know Steve when uh, our agency, High Voltage SEO, was fortunate enough to get the chance to work with Steve on uh, the FreshBooks SEO project. And since then, I've been following Steve in his weekly newsletter, SEO Notebook, and uh, even had the chance to meet him face to face in Chiang Mai a few years ago. Uh, we got a little drunk watching Tim Solo from HREFs uh, on the decks DJing at uh, a party. Uh, Steve, welcome to the show. Welcome. I hope We're that we can on get that the some time. <laughs> Definitely. I, I don't know if there's any plans for uh, Chiang Mai SEO conference, unfortunately, as far as I've heard for 20 No, but we, had, we just have to figure out wherever Tim is DJing and then go there, right? <laughs> Yeah, that's definitely worth a trip to Singapore. 
Yeah, so thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Absolutely. So first we have some questions for you, Steve. And uh, I'd also just like to take um, a minute to just kind of pay tribute to you as a, as a contributor to the, the industry with your uh, SEO notebook and uh, all of the content that you put out there. Because for, for me and, and thousands of other SEOs, I think you're really one of the most valuable contributors to our industry. And uh, I just want to say thank you for that. And we're really glad to have you on the show. Thanks. It's been a, a pretty crazy ride doing SEO Notebook for over three years now. Um, and it's amazing to hear feedback like that. So much appreciated. Definitely. So uh, I don't want to start off with anything too deep right off the bat. Uh, one thing I know a lot of SEOs like to geek out on is their their workstation. And from what I understand, you're no exception. I've seen many many pictures and uh, you highlighting different parts of your office setup. Given you spend so much time at your desk, what's important to you in your office setup? And maybe can you give us a, a, a quick tour? Yeah, so um, I do take my office uh, space very seriously. Um, here I have a, a resin desk. So this is um, walnut slab. And then um, in certain parts of it, it's filled with like a blue epoxy. So it just gives me like a very sort of peaceful, um, you know, central command uh, as I work. Uh, it's also got a live edge, which is kind of cool. Um, and then um, my Herman Miller Aeron office chair is another um, essential piece of, you know, feeling comfortable and the, the tilt mechanism on it is awesome. Um, I don't know how much more detail you want me to get. Um, I've got a Mac Pro, a 32 inch screen. Um, uh, there's a tool that I use called Magnet for my uh, snapping windows on a Mac. I highly recommend it. Um, and then Magnet. sort of, yeah, it's, it, it basically just allows you to snap the windows kind of like on Windows 10. Um, and then uh, over here, I've got my two speakers that are sort of oriented towards the couch, but um, oftentimes I'll have some music going. So, yeah, it's my sort of Zen space. Very cool. Awesome. What speakers do you end up with? Uh, they're they're the they're called um, JBL um, uh, L82s, and I can actually show you the the grill is like oh yeah like those that. are so cool yeah so those are, uh, those are my uh, definite like pride and joy just chill listening time uh, wind down at the end of the day listening to those awesome. So Steve, can you give us a snapshot of your career? I know a lot of people are familiar with your work at FreshBooks, but where did you cut your teeth? How did you get to where you are today? Did you start in SEO? Did you make a shift? Yeah, um, so I was actually came into SEO more through the blogging realm. Um, I was uh, hired as a copywriter at a web development agency and uh, this was in 2010 and uh, tasked to start their blog. And, um, you know, I pretty much had free reign to, to publish what I wanted. And uh, this was back in the days where it was like 7% keyword density, reasonably low competition keyword you were ranking. Um, so I just basically started experimenting with ranking blogs um, at that time. Oops, I'm going to go over here a little bit. Um, so I uh, started ranking blogs at that time and, um, you know, stayed there about a year. And, uh, and then um, got a job in an internet marketing agency, um, actually as a social media manager at that time in 2011, but quickly realized that it was SEO that I loved and started blogging from a very early stage at that company. Um, ended up writing over 150 articles in seven years uh, working for that agency. So they got a pretty good deal out of that. Um, and then uh, left there to another agency um, got fired um, from that agency due to disagreements on strategy. Let's just put it that way. Um, shady PBNs, uh, like really shady. <laughs> um, and uh, and then, um, yeah, like a month and a half later, got the, got the gig at FreshBooks, totally changed my life. Um, you know, got the chance to work with so many different SEOs, um, you know, towards, uh, what was it, like late 2019, 2020, got the chance to work with Andy and Kyle, um, that was amazing. And uh, yeah, um, then during that time at FreshBooks, 
um, after we had had like a lot of success uh, in summer 2019, <clears throat> started to really push um, like, you know, my presence on LinkedIn and uh, was able to get, you know, a bunch of clients for myself and did a pretty intense high side hustle for about nine months until I left FreshBooks and made them one of my clients. Right. Okay. So yeah, from what I understood, you, you did not jump into going out on your own. You were moonlighting uh, to the point where you were very, very confident that uh, you could maintain the momentum of your, yeah. uh, like your side career as your main, main gig. Am I right? How did you yeah. know when I was right? So um, I got a really good piece of advice that said, um, don't leave your job until it's costing you money to stay in your job. So um, this was like literally like January 2020. And, you know, I was like pretty astonished with, um, you know, the revenue that I was generating um, and still working full time. But then around that time in early 2020, um, you know, I had a few really nice contracts come through and I was just like, you know what, if I don't take these contracts um, or the only way that I can take these contracts is if I start peeling my hours back at FreshBooks. So, um, you know, I had gone to the CMO and basically, well, actually my director went to the CMO on my behalf and, uh, and explained that, you know, I was um, really passionate about my job there. I was, you know, really proud of the success that we have but that I wanted to do this for, for more than one company. And um, the CMO was very accepting of this and basically just said, if you want to work like two days a week, we can do that, work two days a week at FreshBooks and then basically start on that. So I, I don't work with FreshBooks anymore because two days a week would be um, you know, too much time to allocate towards one client. Uh, but I did work for them for about a year and a bit um, after after um, uh, I, I initially left. That's great because I've heard the this strategy uh, spoken about a lot that you should try and start by contracting yourself out to your previous employer as a way to kind of de-risk uh, going out on your own. So that worked out pretty well for you by the sound of it. Yeah, I mean, if, if you're doing well at the company and they've seen you make a material impact on the business, there's really no reason why they shouldn't want to keep you, right? So, um, and you, you know, you just, my advice to anybody there is take the time to establish yourself as somebody who, you know, really changed the game at that company. Um, don't ask for that type of arrangement if you don't feel confident that um, they would give you that. But if you, you know, have dedicated at the time like i had dedicated about a year and a half to fresh books um with with the progress that we made and it was quite evident that you know seo had been doing better than it ever had um so um you know they they were in a position to want to keep me in some to some degree and uh you know i, I knew that going in it was obviously a risk to still ask them that but um you know it was one of the best decisions that i've ever made absolutely so you're now past the third year of SEO Notebook from my memories, if my memory serves me correctly. Can you give us a little on the background as to how SEO Notebook came about? Maybe just take us through your idea behind it. And uh, I'm also really curious in how SEO Notebook has affected your career and your life as well. Yeah. Um, so I um, have always been super passionate about SEO before SEO Notebook for many, many years. And um, one of my weaknesses is actually like organization and having too many ideas and uh, not, you know, really being, yeah, very organized with, with, um, with all the stuff, right? Like I would often stay up at night, have an idea, um, like email it to myself or Slack myself or, you know, stuff like that. And, uh, and to try, you know, and test different things. But um, it was never housed in any sort of useful manner. And, um, and it was like two in the morning one night. And I was like, well, what if I just started in Evernote and, you know, all the ideas I have, like I could um, put them all in Evernote. And then the next day I was like, you know, it'd be really cool if, 
if every week, like I started a newsletter and I would email one of these Evernote pages out to the list. And, uh, you know, I came up with uh, the idea uh, in the domain SEO notebook and um, it was available. It was premium domain or just, it was $750. Um, and uh, I just jumped on it. And that night that I had the idea, I didn't sleep because I knew it was something interesting. Um, and I've had a lot of ideas in my life that um, I haven't been successful with. Um, but this one was, uh, you know, the big one that really did change my life. Um, you know, I've been so fortunate enough to have, um, you know, the success with this and people appreciating what I do. And, um, you know, I've, I've stuck to it. Right. So I've not missed one week in three years. Um, it is, uh, you know, definitely challenging, always on the go. I've always got a list of. Um, what to do next. And I don't plan these notes either. It's usually just done the week of, um, you know, 95% of the time. And um, you don't have a backlog of months with SEO notebooks, just all scheduled yeah, out for months in advance. I've got a huge backlog. So anytime I see a post on Facebook that's interesting or LinkedIn, or if I'm doing my own client work and, uh, and I've got something interesting, uh, it's always going in my queue. Um, but I don't really have, I don't plan it out um, months in advance or anything like that. Um, so in terms of like changing my life, um, you know, I'm a full-time entrepreneur now. Um, I have a very, you know, flexible schedule in terms of, um, you know, my day. Uh, I've got a small team, uh, a couple of full-time employees, and then some part-time and contract employees that, um, that help me run my consulting business. And, um, you know, I'm really enjoying it. Um, it's a pretty, pretty sweet deal, I think. Oh, very right. cool. And, um, and you're, you can, you attribute the success you've had, uh, the reputation that you've built generating clients uh, to Esther Notebook. Yeah, definitely. Um, it was that and LinkedIn. Um, that, that helped me the most. And really, you know, LinkedIn was, um, I've actually slowed down on LinkedIn a little bit just because I've got too much um, demand coming in. And it is overwhelming when you've got, um, you know, too many, too many projects that you just can't take. Um, so I've actually slowed, like LinkedIn is honestly like, if anybody is like sleeping on LinkedIn and you're a client SEO, I highly recommend doing it because if, as long as you just have like, you know, useful information, you've got a good graph that you can post and then you can tell people what you did. Um, it's like almost like turning on a tap, like once you kind of establish um, uh, uh, a presence there, which probably took me around like six to nine months of just consistent posting. Um, so if you're a client SEO, go to LinkedIn. There's not that many people who really know their shit on there, um, like in terms of like who's sharing knowledge. Um, yeah, I see a lot of your posts getting like over 200, 300 likes and comments on them. Yeah, yeah, it's um, the reach is amazing on LinkedIn. Um, and uh, and like I said, there's it's not as saturated as Twitter in terms of people sharing knowledge. So um, if you know your stuff and you just dedicate, you know, one post a week for six to nine months, I think you can establish a lot of value. And uh, I actually have. Um, one of my clients who's basically trying to follow in my footsteps, who I'm like coaching, like half the meetings or <laughs> half the meetings that we do is, are like coaching you on LinkedIn and stuff like that. So um, yeah, that's actually something that I've thought of is like doing, a, I, I give away all my like strategy information for free, but um, I have a lot to say on, um, you know, freelancing and kind of marketing yourself and stuff like that. So I honestly thought that maybe like a mini course in, in that would be kind of interesting, but um, it's a time thing. You make sure that uh, you let us know when you want to put that out. We'll help you. IMG, there we go. I'll put it on IMG. <laughs> that is. <For> sure. <laughs> yeah. So Steve, what are some of your general values and beliefs that shape your style of SEO? You know, some like, some people like hacking for quick wins. Some SEOs are link building, others data science-y. Um, tell us more about what, what your core values and your style. Yeah, um, so there's a few um, strategies that I really look to um, niche or niche down on. I say niche because I'm up in Canada. Um, but 
there's a few things that I know very well that if I can land a client and I can just hit a home run every time. Um, so one of the things that I look to do is what I call verticalization. So um, the famous one was, I guess, famous but at FreshBooks. Um, we ranked for invoice template and invoice template was the key term. Uh, we ranked um, uh, number one for almost two years in that 300,000 search keyword that had a lot of relevance to the FreshBooks product. And then, um, you know, we had 110 other pages on invoice templates for graphic designers, for contractors, for lawyers, for all these different professions, and also file types like PDF, Word, Google Docs. And, um, and you know, if you can take one keyword and then span that out into different file types or industries, um, you know, you can basically create this um, cluster uh, that, that works really, really well. And, uh, you know, I've done this for um, clients in the online education niche, um, in indoor maps of all things, right? So indoor maps for, um, for hospitals, for universities, for stadiums, for malls. Um, and, uh, and I love those types of projects. Um, I just, you know, basically if there's an opportunity like that and a client comes along, I'm like, yep, let's do it. Um, and then, so it's it's very very content focused and then usually when we do the link building to that the links tend i tend to go for the money page and then have that all filter out um, to the to the secondary pages and then obviously we also create supporting content uh, for for those secondary pages um, to kind of build little little silos in, in, in each one virtual silos um, and uh, and then beyond that um, you know I, and then also, sorry, um, when I release content like that, and those sort of verticalized structures, um, I like releasing all that content at once. Um, I don't wait to drip anything out. Uh, I just release it at once. And uh, usually the, um, the pattern with that is like six months of pretty flat growth, like mainly just gathering impressions in Search Console then using Search Console data to enrich that content once the impressions start to come in. And then from six to nine months is when we start to see the clicks start to come up. And then nine to 12 months is when we see the exponential growth. Um, so if I, yeah, if I can, um, if I could only do one type of project, it would be that, like, I love it. Like it's so, uh, I know it like the back of my hand at this point. And uh, if anybody has a project like that, um, and you're choosing between HVSEO and Steve, then obviously the choice is Steve. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. I'm pretty sarcastic. So, so I, I know you could take a joke. So. Yeah. Well, I, I guess working with us, you know, that, uh, we, we work in a similar kind of way and we've only kind of been doubling down on that since we've, uh, been working with you. Cause I mean, it's reliable. That's yeah. one of the things that we've always struggled with in SEO is just the, the fluctuation in success, you know? Yeah. Like it's, and we're probably both at points where we're not going to take on clients where th there's like, you know, a lower chance of success. Right. Um, and we obviously have to be pretty um, careful in um, the, what we promise clients as well. Right. Don't, don't over promise something that you can't do because as we know, like, you know, there's a lot of SEOs who just take anything. And even if, even if it's not a good fit for SEO, there's, there's SEO agencies that will uh, accept those types of clients. And I used to work at one, to be quite frank, uh, where I had 180 clients um, under my belt. And, uh, you know, a lot of them had no business really doing SEO. And it was just a, something that the salesperson was trying to meet their quota on. Uh, I beat you. The original SEO agency I worked for had. Yeah, I know. Ago. Yeah. Yeah. You told me that. That's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't think we worked on more than about four or five of them a month. Yeah. Yeah. So. Exactly. Yeah. It's like uh, you know, edit the title tags um, and then just kind of say a prayer after that. <laughs> My God. So, uh, Next question. We need to wrap this up because we need to get started on the, the what people have actually come to join us for today before they start complaining. 
Uh, but I'm curious what your days look like nowadays as a, as a consultant and running SEO notebook and, and an entrepreneur, uh, t- different to how they were uh, working uh, as an internal SEO at, at FreshBooks. What, take us through like what a, what a typical kind of day uh, looks like for you at the moment. Yeah, so I usually start my days at 10 a.m. because I'm not a morning person. Um, I start my best thinking probably from 10 till 3 o'clock in the afternoon. That's when I, my my peak period is um, in terms of productivity. So that's um, when I tend to either start my meetings at 10 or try and clear off my schedule for, for those hours. Um, and then, um, yeah, the, the difference actually FreshBooks was a very chill atmosphere um, you could come in to work whenever you wanted, as long as the numbers were looking good. Um, so, you know, compared to other jobs that I've had, um, it was very, very chill. And then in terms of my week, I usually have about six hours of meetings. And, um, you know, with um, my project manager joining in every meeting, I basically show up to the meeting, um, set the strategy, delegate some things. Um, we meet we meet biweekly with clients. And, um, and yeah, just kind of, you know, every, every two weeks um, sort of set something in action. And uh, the project manager basically takes the minutes of the meeting and then follows up uh, with all the um, stuff post um, meeting. And, uh, and, you know, six hours a week of, of meeting with clients. And, uh, and then beyond that, usually I do my, my notes on Fridays and uh, you know that's pretty much it. So it's um, it's a nice lifestyle. Okay. And what's your preference for project management tools, software? Uh, we use ClickUp. Yeah. yeah. ClickUp. And who's your ideal client nowadays? Is there a specific industry or personality type? Uh, they're usually SaaS clients. Um, like I would say, eighty to ninety percent SaaS. And um, I don't look at one particular industry, but I lo- love to niche down on that verticalization strategy if I can. Nice. I was just getting some echo, so I'm muted, sorry. Uh, yes, we have so many questions, and um, but I think it's time we should move on to your top notes. Yeah, let's do it. Um, All right, I'm cool. To show you guys. I um, think so- we're ready to take over if you are so, yeah so um just to precursor this a little bit seo notebook um the idea behind it is to provide very short actionable uh things so i don't um construct like a big long course and like a to z um this is what you have to do to to rank uh but instead i give you um like one thing that you can just try every week um, so I, I'll basically share my screen and kind of go through um, the different uh, notes that I've picked for this. Um, and these are all from this year. Um, I'll kind of just, yeah, run you guys through it. If you go in the same order as you gave them to us, Steve, then uh, I've, I've got titles for each of them that I can load up. Yeah, that's that's what I've got um, here. So we'll go from uh, left to right, and then that's going to be in that order. Um, okay, yeah. Right. So um, the the first um, <laughs> the first strategy is one that I use uh, with my clients, and it's actually funny because like sometimes I'll uh, I'll create a note and I haven't done that for a client, and then then that becomes one of the things that we sort of focus on. So this was a classic example of that, um, whereby um, we looked at like comparison pages. So um, you've probably seen these before, where you have like ClickUp versus Asana as uh as one um let me know if i need to make this bigger um uh, you know you'd have a page that's like click up versus asana and you know or asana alternative and um and you would basically um be able to convert a lot of users for your SaaS product when they're evaluating one versus another um and what i've also noticed in the field just you know doing my research is that oftentimes um, companies also create three-way comparison pages. So um, let's say you're a competitor to Asana and ClickUp, but you're much smaller, right? So there's a site called Nifty Project Management. 
that is obviously not as well known as ClickUp versus a, a ClickUp or Asana. And um, you want to kind of tack your brand onto that popular search of ClickUp versus Asana. So you would basically create a page um, that was a three-way comparison. So what I did uh, was create this spreadsheet uh, that has a script inside it. And um, when- Do you mind zooming in on that a tiny bit? Yeah. So uh, this script, what you would do is you would put your brand name uh, and then uh, the different competitors that you wanted to compare. And then um, you would generate the combinations and that would create um, this sheet here that would have all the three-way combinations um, just in one click um, for, uh, for this brand. So you would have Asana versus Jira versus Nifty, Monday versus Notion versus Nifty, and um, and then also create the URLs and also create the title tags uh, for, for all of these um, different things. So in one click, you can basically go from uh, these competitors, whoever you want to list, your brand, and then be able to generate all the various combinations, URLs, and title tags uh, based on that. So um, this is like a totally free resource. Um, you would just probably, Andy, I'm sure that you'll link the notes um, uh, uh, somewhere. Um, and we you will. Can just basically, you can just basically, yeah, use this. And then um, I also have a YouTube uh, video. Um, yeah, I'll get into that in a second. Uh, but yeah, basically this sheet, just the script that's in there uh, will generate all of these things for you. So it's pretty cool, I think. That is awesome. Definitely, um, I can imagine you've used that a lot in the working so much in the SaaS space. Yeah. Um, so the more the more competitors you list here, obviously the more combinations there's going to be. So I probably wouldn't go with that many because you're you'd be creating like a whole how many pages like um, th thirty six pages. Uh, but if you have um, maybe your top three competitors. Um, the number of combinations will be a lot less. And, um, and then, you know, you can kind of just go for, for those ones, right? So, um, yeah, um, I have used this in my own um, client work. And uh, it's definitely a nice uh, little project that if you have a SaaS client, you can, uh, can kind of just use this sheet to, uh, you know, keep yourself busy for a few months and then drive some results. Uh, and you normally using comparison tables on these pages or what do you normally do with them? Yeah, um, good question. So um, generally we've got like the three-way comparison and then um, you can do tables, but what you, a good formula for this type of um, page is going to be where you pull out specific features uh, for each, um, you know, uh, like maybe it's like, how does um, each project management tool um, handle teams and seats and like pricing and things like that. So you basically want to take um, the various features and uh, characteristics of each software and then compare um, each, each uh, tool uh, based on those um, different criteria and then kind of come up with a score. And another thing, another thing to be um, cognizant of when you uh, create a page like this is don't like if you're nifty, um, don't uh, don't you know make yourself better than every on every single criteria. You know, obviously, focus on your strengths and lead with that, um, and then you know give yourself be be humble um, when you when you make these comparisons so that you're not just saying you're the best over and over. I happen to know an on-page SEO software that we might just have to try this with. Hey, I think I know which one you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure. So, um, and then, yeah, one thing um, like, uh, you know, that you have to also be aware that if you're using a tool uh, like this is that um, there, you want to check to see, first of all, if there are results for a keyword like this. So if Asana versus Monday versus Nifty doesn't have a lot of results that are going to be relevant to that page, then be careful. But if you do see stuff like that, or if you just want to do it like Asana versus Monday 
uh, as your keyword and then sort of splice in uh, information about, you know, your brand. Um, just make sure that the results um, are pulling in, uh, you know, relevant results for, for those keywords. Should we move on to the next one, Steve? Yeah, let's do it. Um, and then I'm going to actually come back to this one uh, with, with what I mentioned here in this YouTube video. Um, I'll come back to that in a sec. Um, so this one was uh, based on a uh, LinkedIn post that I um, uh, saw, and it's by a, a pretty cool SEO named Lily Ray, who's uh, who's pretty respected, I would say. And um, she, uh, she posted this um, regular expression that um, does a really, really cool thing. So this is going to be useful to anybody who's working with a popular brand that has searches um, based on um, that brand. So like, let's say you were, um, yeah, let's say you were Toyota and, um, and, or like, even like you could niche down and say like Toyota Corolla, um, you would put the brand name in this uh, bracket here. And then um, it's going to show you any questions that people ask specifically about your brand, right? So any question with who, what, where, when, why, how, and then Toyota Corolla, right? So you can imagine <clears throat> putting this into GSC and finding a bunch of questions that people are asking about your brand. And if you develop a very comprehensive list of those questions, you want to make sure that you are answering it and not somebody else, right? Because um, somebody else is answering it. You may end up paying an affiliate commission if somebody has to, you know, click on that link to to that. Um, you may um, your your users may end up on a page that speaks negatively of your brand. Um, this is a very good kind of reputation management strategy as well. And could be allowing easy. your competitors to take that content for you. Exactly. Yeah. You, you, your competitors might be yeah targeting that specifically. And Andy, I think um, HVSEO has a little trick up their sleeve with regards to that type of strategy as well um, with the competitor uh, questions and stuff. Um, right. Am I right? <laughs> Uh, yeah, but I'm I'm not allowed to talk about it. <laughs> okay, <laughs> not because well, I don't want to share, yeah, but illegal. You just did. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's super easy to. So you just basically go into GSC, copy this uh, little bit of uh, regex, and then um, just when you go into um, query, just select this and then paste in um, this uh, regular expression with your brand name uh, in here. And then you're going to get a list of, um, you know, a ton of different uh, questions based on your brand. And um, I've taken this a step further and put in even more question modifiers. So beyond just who, what, where, when, why, how, uh, we have things like can, is, does, aren't, won't, etc. So you can actually um, use this one uh, for even more comprehensive um, data. And um, yeah, uh, this is uh, very, very easy to implement and very, very powerful as well. That's awesome. So yeah, highly recommend uh, this note. If you um, have a brand that is popular and that people are asking questions about, and um, you could also use this um, same regular expression if you're, if you're not in that boat, you could use this same regular expression to highlight questions around a specific keyword um, if it's not just your brand. So any keyword that you wanted to talk about, uh, that you wanted to find questions about, you could just put in here and then use this. So, you know, not everybody, not every site that you work on is going to have that like same brand um, awareness where people are asking tons of questions about it, but um, it, it may still be useful to you to do that. So let's move on to the next one. Yeah. Uh, this is the one that I kind of wanted to come back. And uh, this was actually um, given this the, <laughs> nice screenshot there. Um, uh, this uh, this um, specific note was um, 
the tip was given to me by a guy named Kapil Ochani, who I actually met in Chiang Mai. And uh, I worked with Kapil on a couple of projects um, where we actually teamed up as a, as a two-person SEO team uh, to work on uh, a couple of clients, uh, most notably one in the crypto space that's doing quite well. Um, and Kapil has this, uh, Kapil is actually a really, really brilliant SEO. And um, he, he loves to um, mess around with uh, featured snippets. So he's, he, he, he will like sit in WordPress uh, on his clients and like just tweak and tweak and tweak and tweak until um, he's uh, captured snippets. And one of the really cool insights that he had um, around comparison keywords, so doing, you know, Nifty versus Asana or Asana versus ClickUp, is uh, leading with the keyword, the main difference between. So I have a bunch of examples here um, of versus keywords using this exact um, phrasing. So the main difference between leaders and managers is that, or the main difference between preferred stock and common stock is that. Um, and, you know, there's a bunch of examples here um, of the main difference uh, all working. So you can see um, this, you know, really does work. And uh, I, I've used this in my own practice and I know Kapil has used it. And uh, there's also a friend of mine who does um, comparison pages specifically as one of his main service deliverables. And uh, he uses this main difference trick. And uh, it really does seem to capture the snippet quite effectively. Um, I can't guarantee that it works every single time, but most of the time when I've used this, it worked. So um, if you have any uh, uh, pages that have ver verses in it, um, I would, you know, take you do a search operator, like if you own Investopedia, which probably no one does watching this, but um, you would say site investopedia.com in title versus, and that's going to give you a list of all the pages on your site, or pretty much all the pages on your site that have verses in the title tag. And then you can quickly create um, a list of, of uh, pages that you can then modify uh, with this, the main difference keyword. Are you just putting that in the title and the H1? Um, not, not in the H1. So the, the title, the, sorry, the title would be um, like manager versus leader, something with those keywords in it. The H1 right. will also have manager versus leader. And then the text directly beneath that H1 starts with the main difference between. Yeah, of course, makes sense. So this is, uh, yeah, I this is yet again like another very easy to implement um, strategy, the type of stuff that we have on SEO Notebook, and uh, this type of stuff that I love to share because I get I always get a lot of good feedback for these types of things, and um, and then the other good thing to note about SEO Notebook is it's not just me, it's not just my strategies. Um, a lot of them are, I would say, probably like twenty five percent or are things that I come up with um, in my own practice. But, you know, a lot of the times um, it's things that other SEOs are doing. And I always ask their permission and I always give them credit. So, um, you know, it's really, really fun to kind of give other people um, a platform and a spotlight on something that they want to do. Um, so, yeah, um, you know, huge shout out to Kapil um, on this uh, strategy. Right. Really right, great way start. to extend your network as well. Pardon me? A really great way to extend your professional network as well. Oh, out. yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, I have a few people that I've drawn multiple, um, uh, multiple uh, uh, notes from. All right, so the next one is going to be a project that I worked on specifically. Uh, so this is one of my clients. And um, it is, you know, not... Um, I would say not like the most, like a lot of people would know the fundamentals of this, of, which is image SEO, but I'm not sure if people have had these types of results with it. Um, and uh, basically the, the client um, had uh, another verticalized strategy. So this was 
uh, I won't name the client, but I can tell you what the, the, um, the, uh, the thing was. So it was contract templates. So it was like SEO agency contract template, um, wedding photographer contract template and stuff like that. And, um, and we basically had around 50 or 60 pages based on different contract templates. And, um, and the format that we used uh, was pretty much like this wireframe. So we had the H1 headline. So it'd be like wedding photographer agreement template or whatever. We had a little bit of optimized text here. We had a CTA button, a link to download. So the CTA was to download the software. And then the template was to download just the free version. And then we would have the template image um, here. So whenever, if you've ever had the chance to optimize for templates, um, they are very, very, um, it's a great keyword because usually there's a lot of search volume around it. And um, it sort of takes, um, you know, one aspect of the software and, um, and highlights that aspect of the software, gives the user a free version. And then if they want something more robust, they can try your product. And um, the main insight that I would have and, and said that, you know, the main thing that made this um, so successful in driving, this was a, actually a brand new site. So this site had zero traffic. You know, it was a little bit before this, but this was a brand new website. So within 16 months, uh, we earned, looks like, um, close to, uh, I don't know, what is it, 50,000 uh, clicks here um, uh, each week. Um, and uh, um, uh, overall, uh, sorry, it was maybe a little less than that. Um, my bad. That's uh, clicks. Clicks were around uh, 1,300 a day. Um, and then 50,000 impressions a week. Um, so what we kind of did in the main insight that I would say that made this the most successful was for the template image, we put a colored border around the image uh, template image uh, JPEG. And that really made it stand out on the image pack. So on the image pack, we would have you know, a bunch of not very attractive looking JPEGs with no border and nothing really to stand out with. But um, on ours, we had a very definitive border around uh, the edge and that made the, the CTR on those images much higher. And then the second aspect of that would have been um, creating multiple images to rank for that keyword. And the way that we did that was to create a slider uh, where you could click left and right to cycle through the different images. And for each contract template, we probably had, I would say four to five um, different images for each contract template, which gave us the ability to um, occupy more real estate on the image pack. So this was a nice little formula for success. Um, with image SEO. And this was actually refined um, based on some stuff that I did at FreshBooks. Um, I sort of had version 2.0 of this and did it a little bit better the second time. Okay, curious. So most of that traffic in the graph is from uh, image traffic. It's all image traffic, yeah. This wow. is uh, 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 filtered to, to have images. So you can see it just says image there. And then obviously we we ranked uh, we ranked pretty well for the keywords for these for these uh, pages as well. But don't underestimate image traffic; it can really drive a lot, especially for template keywords. So I we're about halfway it. we're about halfway through, and uh, you're right; we're notoriously going over time. <laughs> but uh, let's uh, let's uh, go to the next one. Um, so this tip came from uh, SEO named Jeff Lenny. Uh, who's uh, you know, pretty um, pretty advanced, I would say, as an affiliate SEO. And uh, we're friends on Facebook. And um, he posted this just on his personal page um, about finding guest post opportunities on Twitter. So what he basically does is puts the keyword into Twitter. So if the case is, uh, the keyword in this case is surfing. And then he puts in quotes, guest post. Um, which you could also put things like guest article, guest blogger, et cetera. 
And um, you would basically find um, instances of companies or sites tweeting, um, you know, a guest post based on whatever niche that is, right? So in this case, somebody is talking about UNC blog guest post written by so and so on surfing in the south. Um, so you basically take your niche, let's say it's golf or it's camping or whatever it is, and just put in guest post or guest article or guest author, etc., into Twitter. And you can find um, instances of, of uh, sites that would accept guest posts uh, based on that niche. And that they're actually going to promote as well. Yeah, that they would, exactly. Yeah, they would actually uh, promote that. And a lot of the times um, the sites that um, would have uh, these types of, you know, um, tweets are not the sites that have right for us pages. They're, <clears throat> you know, more um, more legitimate sites that aren't um, necessarily you know looking for uh, guest authors uh, in, in a right for us manner. Oh, All right, awesome. so that's a nice Thank little uh, yeah. not not highly scalable to be honest. But if you're doing your niche research, you could easily hire you know have your VA uh, spend an afternoon um, trying to find these opportunities and then reaching out to those sites. Um, creatively. I don't cover the, the outreach tips uh, on this one, just simply finding it. Hmm. It's maybe something you can come back and do once uh, once every six months or so. Oh yeah, definitely. A yeah. nice little link building hack for sure. Um, and then um, this uh, next tip is um, finding opportunities on Reddit and basically using the site search, um, you know, like this, site colon reddit and then um, the uh what do you call the subreddit uh for gardening and then say how do i right so um this would give us um a bunch of topics um within gardening for questions people are asking about how do i do this related to gardening so um how do i prune this how do i start a fruit and vegetable garden um you know, how do I get whatever this synth thing in the soil? Um, this gives you a ton of really, really cool um, topics that, you know, people are asking on Reddit. And if people are asking that on Reddit, um, there's a good chance that people are asking that on Google as well. So uh, it's a nice little um, hack that um, you can use to generate content ideas, um, you know, just using Reddit in this. And you could also use Quora, um, probably some other, um, uh, you know, niche, uh, uh, forums as well. All right. And then the last one, um, the last one is, uh, a, um, uh, um, uh, came from a video that I was watching from passive income geek, which is a popular YouTube channel. And, uh, there was just a moment in the video that I thought was really, really actionable that I, uh, sort of isolated. So what he does is he'll go to um, Ahrefs, and I'm sure you could do this in SEM Rush too, uh, but he goes to the organic keywords report. And it's actually important if you use Ahrefs, go to the legacy report because the new report won't be able to do this just yet. Uh, but what he does is he goes to the organic keywords report uh, for a site like Reddit or Quora um, so, you know, massive websites and he filters position one to two. So he looks where um, Reddit or Quora is ranking, um, you know, very highly. And that's an indication that you could probably overtake them because their content is user generated and not optimized. And he'll put in um, his niche keyword, right? So in this case, he put in golf and um, this is how the export looks, right? So these are all the keywords where um, uh, Reddit, um, sorry, Quora in this case, is ranking number one for something with golf in, in, into it, right? So um, slowest players on the PGA Tour, um, let's see, three handicap in golf, uh, what brands of clubs are used at Top Golf. Um, you'd kind of have to weed through this but there's some really interesting keywords that you can um, surface 
uh, based on this. And it's pretty fast uh, little strategy to implement as well. And I think really your success on this strategy comes from the keywords that you that you want to use, right? So if your niche is golf, maybe that is a little bit broad, but something like putting PGA here um, might yield better results or, um, you know, various uh, other, you know, Augusta or whatever. You just have to experiment uh, with, with the keywords that you use. And a good way to do that might be to start broad on golf and then use um, mini golf first date uh, good idea there. Um, you know, uh, use this sort of broad report initially, and then sort of drill down on um, on various other keywords to see um, you know where Cora is ranking highly uh, for for your niche. And this one works on any site that is made up of mostly user generated content. Yeah. Yeah. So you can start with Quora and Reddit uh, and then move on to different forums if you have those um, in your in your uh, space. Hmm. So that's, that's awesome. uh, those are my those are my favorite notes from this year. So seven out of halfway through the year. So um, hope you guys uh, hope you guys enjoyed those. Yeah, lots of inspiration there. I'm not going to share. I'm going to de-share my screen now. Some reason I'm getting an echo. Thank you, Steve. That was brilliant. I think that's uh, what I like about these is uh, just general concepts. Is firstly, um, you're taking a lot of these out of stuff that you're uh, reading from elsewhere, and then diving deeper or elaborating on or turning it into little micro tools or automations and stuff like that, which is just kind of a, a way of thinking. Like so often, we just look at things. Uh, we we overlook so much uh, value that's that's there, and if you just kind of take the time to uh, think through it a little bit uh, and work out like how you could go one step further, or how can you apply this in a different way, um, all of a sudden you've got some really powerful uh, tools and strategies. Yeah, I try to, um, if I notice something that somebody else has shared, I'll kind of want to put my own spin or add a little bit of extra value. Like for example, that one with the regex and the, and the, um, and the brand search, I like, you know, took that a step further and added more question modifiers and try to enhance it a little bit if I can. And I think one of the biggest differences is, you know, the people who, see these and they say, Oh, that's cool. They get the little dopamine rush. And then there are people who actually implement. And I, it seems that you're the implementer. Yeah. Do you do it yourself or do you, you know, have a meeting with your team every time you see one of these, how do you get from the observer to the action taker? Well, since I'm a consultant, I put together the recommendations and then have the client execute that. Um, so it's really in those biweekly meetings when we discuss, um, you know, whether it's the comparison page strategy or adding the main difference or whatever it may be, uh, we provide a thorough um, list of recommendations and then have the client implement that. And sometimes the clients don't implement that and it's super frustrating. Um, you know, sometimes you have amazing recommendations that clients uh, sleep on for too, way too long and then finally they do it. Um, but, you know, um, it, most of the time I have a really productive relationship and we're able to, to action these things. Awesome. Just looking through the chat and uh, there's a lot of comments, but General Hayes, uh, words of encouragement. Uh, we do have a question from Deepak. I would like to have the regex link. Please share. So we'll we'll um, make sure that all the notes are shared. Oh, okay. Yep. Yep. Sure. And uh, and yeah, you can just uh, grab that about. grab that sheet and uh, or grab that notion note and just use that. Yeah. Here we got one from uh, Doran Chappell. Steve, what's your best advice in how to price SEO services and how do you deal with clients who are basically no budget? brand new e-com sites. I guess you're probably not working with them if they have no budget. Am I right? <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm, I'm not, 
but I have been in those types of situations more early on in my career. Um, when it comes to pricing your services, um, set a minimum, set a minimum and stick to it. That's all I can really say. Um, you know, don't, um, because ultimately the lower that you go, the few, you only have certain bandwidth to take on, you know, X number of clients. And if you start going below your minimum, um, you're going to be limiting your revenue. So when I started, um, and this is like, while I was working at FreshBooks, my minimum was $5,000 a month. And, um, and it seemed crazy at the time because as a freelancer, you might think like, okay, $1,000 a month is pretty good. But I knew that where I wanted to get to, if I was taking 10, 10 $1,000 clients a month, that wasn't going to be enough for me to like comfortably uh, leave my job at, at 10K revenue a month. So I, I set my minimum at 5000 and I marketed myself in the way that I wanted to market myself, which is through inbound lead generation, through giving away all of my knowledge, through LinkedIn and my newsletter. And um, I just stuck to that and I didn't accept any less and, uh, and it worked out. But it was, it was, uh, it was that minimum um, in combination with um, you know, being pretty um, adamant about what type of marketing that I wanted to do and looking that looking at that as a long term strategy, not just something that I was going to, um, you know, abandon after a while. I don't know if you've read Arnold Schwarzenegger's autobiography, but he had a similar strategy when coming into Hollywood that he had investments and he had uh built up a, a, a portfolio to support himself. So he was had, he had passive income from uh, like property development and he didn't have to take any job that uh, he could take in Hollywood as an actor, uh, like most struggling actors do when they're trying to start their career. He could actually wait for the right roles to come around that suited the direction that he wanted to go and then only take those because he wasn't desperate. Yeah, and that's what I had with a full-time job. I had a salary, right? So it was like salary like wasn't anything special, but um, it was the guaranteed income that was going to come in. And I knew that while I had that, I could also set this minimum, right? Right. There's a few more questions coming through. Uh, everyone's been very good in leaving their questions to the, the Q&A time. Appreciate that. Uh, what are your thoughts on internal link building, effectively building lots of relevant posts pointing to one key page or for better rankings? Also, well, that's just a comment. Um, yeah, uh, so the um, with internal uh, linking, um, the thing that you want to... Um, well, it's not just a matter. There's no, there's no answer that I can say like, yes, build all your internal links to one page. Your internal links have to come from pages that have links going into them, which have page rank, right? So pick the pages that have the most page rank and then build internal links from those pages. So like you could say, for example, um, 10 internal links from 10 pages that have page rank is a billion times better than a hundred internal links from pages with no page rank, right? So um, choose your your internal link um, uh, source pages with that in mind. Um, and then the second thing is um, when you create an internal link, um, make sure that just for a user perspective that people are going to click on that link and give them an indication of what rests on the other side of that page, right? So give them a clue in terms of the context, the anchor text, uh, the surrounding uh, copy uh, in terms of what they should expect when they, when they click on that internal link. That's good advice. Lauren, did you want to take this one? Yeah, so we have another question about these three-way product comparisons. Do you have a theory as to why three is better than two? 
And um, if it's just the extra brand name, is it just that it's extra potential searches or is there another reason? So uh, just to be clear, I would still recommend doing two-way comparison pages. Um, I would not abandon that strategy at all. I would use the three-way as a supplement to that strategy as something to try afterwards. So, in, and it especially is going to work well when you have um, a brand that's not as well known and you have two larger brands or however many combinations of, of larger brands. So it's just tacking your brand onto those searches. Uh, this is a very important question that's come up from the SEO pub. What's your favorite Nintendo game? I, I know the SEO pub. Um, he's actually one of my friends. Um, so, uh, yeah, we've worked together on a couple things. Um, my favorite Nintendo game uh, on the classic NES has got to be um, Excite Bike. Wrong answer. Okay. I'm not, I'm not into like, I'm not into like the Zelda kind of like, you know, spending a lot of time. I just like the quick stuff. Uh, that's, uh, oh, uh, we have, we have one. We might just finish off there. I think we're a bit over time, but uh, Terry Power wants to know if we can have a sneak preview, what might be coming next week's um, SEO notebook. Okay, that is very ironic because I saw a post from Mike Friedman uh, from the SEO pub yesterday, and I thought that might make a good note. Um, it was uh, something to do with Google Search Console. I don't remember the exact uh, context of it, but maybe something from the SEO pub. Um, I honestly haven't decided yet, so I don't know. <laughs> You'll have to usually. Sign up. SEO notebook and get it delivered to your inbox. Yeah, usually the way it works is Tuesday. I don't think about it because that's the day that it goes out. Wednesday, I may take a look and kind of decide like what I'm going to do. And then Thursday, I try to decide. And then Friday, I actually do it. Right. Awesome. Well, Sorry, thank you uh, so much, Steve. I had a blast. Thank you for having me. Let's try and get you back on in another six months to wrap up the end of the year. Yeah, and, and also for that course that you're going to make. Oh, Nudge right, yeah, and I'm obligated. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I, I, as an entrepreneur, I get to decide what I, what I do. So that's uh, when, I, when the time comes, we'll, we'll figure it out. But right yeah. now, it seems like a little bit much. I'm also trying to, um, to finally release my WordPress plugin um, gscore.io, um, which integrates search console data into um, your content. So that's been my my focus and getting back into that. But uh, we have some we have some challenges uh, with it, but um, we're actually very close to the finish line. Um, so it's something that I kind of have took my foot off the gas for a little while. Um, to be honest, dealing with some personal issues, um, just yeah, with life just getting in the way, and then um, and then being able to get get back to that finally. Score. So do you have an expected release date for that? I, I would like to do it by um, Black Friday would be would be my goal. Yeah. Sounds good. We'll hold you to that. Uh, if attendees want to contact you or if they want to just reach out through social channels, what, what is the best way for them to do that? Do you have a preferred social profile? Uh, LinkedIn is, is easy. Um, Facebook uh, might get lost, but honestly, you can just email me at steve at SEO notebook or just reply to any one of my emails and I'll usually check that and get back to you. Oh, okay. So then uh, the website address is on the screen and you can sign up for the newsletter there. I think there's also a page if you're interested in working with Steve there. There's a, a a bit of information, a form that you can fill out. Um, back to us. Sorry, was there something else you wanted to say, Steve? Uh, no, I think that pretty much covers like all the all the stuff um, that we uh, wanted to kind of cover in terms of the notes. And um, for me, yeah, I just uh, I'm, I love doing this stuff. I love SEO. So any any chance I can get to kind of 
share the knowledge with more than one person at a time, I'm always going to be on top of it. Amazing. Thanks so much for joining us. Uh, it was a really, really great session. Um, we had one of the highest number of uh, attendees register for today. So I think that's a, a testament to your, your reputation in, in the industry. So we'll be putting the replay video uh, out through email with links to the various notes uh, tomorrow. So you can stay tuned for that. And uh, we're putting these events on each and every month in the same kind of format as, as today. Uh, next month, who do we have, Lauren? I think it's Taylor, right? Uh, uh, yeah, it could be Taylor or or John, John, John Romain. Uh, oh, in, yeah, in you're right. Of the SEO Romain. Accelerator. And he's going to be going through a couple of the lessons from his new course, which isn't out yet, but I think it's coming out uh, next month in IMG. He's a professional SEO coach. That's that's his main bread and butter of being an SEO coach for people wanting to grow their agencies. So that should be really interesting. Um, for now, I think that's that's it from us at the SEO Lounge. Thank you for co-hosting with me, Lauren. Thank you. Always a pleasure. And thanks again, Steve. And thanks to all the attendees that uh, came along today. Definitely much appreciated and look forward to coming back. Great. All right. Well, thank you, everyone. Have a great day or night, and we will see you next month.